Back in book one of Sailing Adrift, we completely refit our 1972 vintage sailboat in our driveway. And then we splashed it into the Columbia River. And guess what? It floats. So now we're gonna move aboard and live our lives on the water. Last week, we created our own custom jackline system, installed it, and tested it. I'm like, whoa! As long as I hold on, I'm good. <laughs> I call that a success. It's been getting pretty chilly on the boat over the last couple months, with temperatures in the mid-30s, which brings us to our next big project. This is what happens when you, uh, you know, that whole uh, man plans and God laughs thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening right now. Yep. Let's get a good chuckle out of this one. <laughs> yeah, our plans for being in Mexico by now didn't involve the need for a heater. Hi. Hello. Check this out. I'm trying to get this heater to work. It's the last thing that Kelly's making me do. And it's not freaking easy, man. I gotta somehow get this box off, get all the cords out, and not die. We tried to make the heater that came with the boat work, but we lost the manual and the wiring diagram. And after several deep dives and rabbit holes, try to get this stupid thing out. So I can put the new one. Kelly's just like, hey, just like, you know, fix the heater already. Meanwhile, we lost our entire wiring diagram and he buried it. Whose fault is that mine? But have a little compassion for the poor bastard. This is the kit we bought from Amazon. So the kit is actually pretty complete and it comes with a bunch of stuff that we have no intention of using. There's like a, a muffler that is designed to be outside of a vehicle, like in a parked RV or uh, semi-truck. Uh, we don't need that and it actually wouldn't work in the boat because that has the potential for letting carbon monoxide build up into the boat. Okay, the heater is installed. Kind of, the platform is, not all the parts are. I gotta get that all taken care of and uh, we gotta get the fuel line hooked up and then we can rebuild uh, this little area that I'm sitting in. That'll be nice. But let's take a look. There's the platform, that looks pretty hokey, but there's the heater. The platform is actually quite stable because there are two little leaf springs that are attached to the hole with fiberglass. So it looks ugly, but it is strong. Gotta hook up the fuel line and the air intake and then the electrical, and then we'll worry about the exhaust at a later date because I think I'm gonna need to order pieces. Because the exhaust that a truck would use leak like a sieve because no one cares it's outside of the truck and it just blows off into the atmosphere like the end of the exhaust hose would anyway. But in a boat, we'll collect that and that's no good. So we need a sealed exhaust hose that can handle the heat. And we're talking seven or 800 degrees. I'm gonna get out of here and then we'll get to doing the fuel line. Here's how I exit. You gotta shiv your head way over here and get your feet out. And then back it up. One leg. The left leg. Ooh. And then you do a push up. And then you just slide yourself out on the stair. Rub your belly on it for good luck. <laughs> and then just like that you're out. No big deal. Just finished up wiring the heater, control panel and everything. It's got power. And the control panel has power. I haven't flipped the breaker yet, but we installed it up here. Um, yeah, let's uh, flip the breaker and see if we get at least a display. We're not ready to actually test the heater yet because the exhaust system is still on order. So we gotta wait to install that so we don't die of carbon monoxide poisoning. So there's the breaker. Aha! <laughs> Look at that. We've got a display. I don't know what any of that means. But I'm guessing this is for the little remote control that it came with. This must say that it's got battery and that looks like my heater. It's a step in the right direction. We now have power to the unit. Everything seems to be working. We will need to uh, finish up the uh, exhaust install, which 
some of the parts don't come till early next week. So we're gonna put a pin in that and continue to use our heaters until this point. Be nice to have forced air heating. If you look outside, it's kind of miserable, like more than kind of miserable. But at least this means I can put everything back and this is all done. And then when we get the exhaust stuff, that's gonna be its own can of worms because we've got to uh, insulate the pipe because it can get up to 700 degrees on the exhaust and that starts fires. So we gotta be careful with it. So until those parts arrive, we are sticking it out with our electric heater. Today I'm going to attempt an at-home on-boat workout. It's pretty cold here and we don't have a heater yet. So I think a workout is kind of necessary to heat up and start the day. We'll see how it goes because I have a pretty confined space to work out in. It's really just this floor that I'm standing on and I have the settee here with a little bit of a step right there. I also have some resistance bands and a kettlebell that I need to dig out from underneath the settee. This guy has been a champ. He's helped us with a lot of projects. You can tell right there from all the primer. That went surprisingly well. There were some exercises that were a little more difficult than others, but I think I have a pretty solid workout routine. And I can always change it up. There's tons of at-home WOD and CrossFit workouts to choose from. If you Google prison workout, it's actually quite appropriate in this space. So anyway, um, that was a success. Yeah, just knowing that I can do a workout in this space is, is pretty awesome. I do have some goals. I would like to lose at least 20 pounds by the time we take off. And I think that's achievable. I gotta work on my clickbait body. It's gonna be a long road. It's gonna be tough. I don't know if I'm ready to give up wine yet. I don't know if I'm ready to give up cheese or bread or anything good. Uh, this year, with uh, the year wrapping up, I think one of my New Year's resolutions is to take better care of myself and take better care of us really and make sure we're doing things right not rushing it and just living our lives as fullest and best as we can with the circumstances we have a little cool down sounds nice just going for a walk outside the marina Hey, what's up? Nice timing, actually. I haven't seen you down there for a while. What are you talking about, man? I mean, it's been the last, like, five days down here. There we go. We have the exhaust on the right, the intake on the left, and in the middle is the fuel line. In an ideal world, I would have ordered, like, a, a cross section so that the air would come in one and go out all three and head to each of the locations. But they don't sell that, so I had to buy two T's. So the air goes into the first tee and then shoots off to the um, heater behind me, the register behind me, then it goes over into the other tee and then shoots off into the front of the boat and then the aft cabin. Because of that, we're not getting as much heat forward as we want where the major part of the boat is. I mean, this area is about, oh, a quarter of the boat in total length. That back there is the same and up there is the other half. Might be a little less than that, but still, it's tough to get heat all the way down there. Plus that's the longest run that the heat duck has to go. So to fix that, we're gonna adjust the baffles that come in there and make it so this one is so restricted it almost nowhere passes through. That one's slightly better and this one's wide open. Ready to give it a test? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, cross your fingers and nothing bad happens. <sighs> All right, we gotta turn on the breaker. Let's turn on the display again. I don't think I'm ready for it to do that. I'm gonna have to do some homework here. What is, 
4.5 hertz mean? <laughs> it shows it's on. Yeah, let's see what's going on. I definitely will need to consult the manual. Guess what that is? The heat is on. There is the exhaust well above the water line and it goosenecks clear up to about this height before it comes down and out. It is definitely warm, but not so warm that you're gonna burn yourself. So it does cool off quite a bit between the time that it exits the heater and the time it comes out the side of the boat. We're supposed to expect a little bit of off gassing and smoke at first. We we'll definitely smell that. Hasn't exploded yet, which is good because my face is right here. That is good. Nothing's falling off. Go in the salon and put your hand on the heater like register and see if you feel any warmth coming out. Kind of. I want to feel it more than I'm feeling it. Okay. In order to help the airflow, we added a computer fan that plugs into a USB. We'll probably only use that when we're using the heater, obviously, but you can turn it on to high. That fan creates a vacuum and increases the overall airflow. What about the one that's behind these guys? Hey, are you getting, are you getting the heat coming out of the register? Put your hand there. Oh yeah, that's for sure coming out. Okay, so it's just those little things need to be adjusted. Yeah. But hey. The heat is on. <laughs> we got heat. So that's working. Huh, I don't understand this Hertz thing. 4.8 Hertz. I don't know what that means, but the heat little thing is on a three out of five. So the heat is on, but it's not circulating properly among the vents. Are there any settings on the actual unit? No, this is the whole controls. We do have this little manual, but when I've consulted it before, it makes no sense at all, so. Time for a little trial and error to fine tune the settings. Chris is down in the engine room with the heater, and I'm checking all the vents. We're talking about the one by the robot, right? What? Nothing. What? Nothing. It might just take a while to travel that far. What? Do we have something blocking this? What? It's blowing more. What? And after all that, what? So it goes out and then it tees to this one and then it goes over and tees into that one and this one. So these ones definitely have the bigger run. So I just kind of put the baffle closed on this and hopefully it'll kind of balance itself out. Plus it'll be a lot easier to tell if it's working mm -hmm. when we don't have all the doors and windows open. That's also true. Yeah, but yeah. I mean like it works. Yeah. It's, it's generating heat. Nothing has exploded so far. We'll continue to monitor it, but uh, I think we did. I think, yeah. we, I think we installed the heater finally. Woohoo! How long did that take? Uh, a couple months. What did you hear from me earlier today? Uh, a lot of swearing. Yeah, anyway. So, we did we'll it. keep monitoring, but I think we did it. I think we freaking heated the boat. <laughs> I'm so happy about this. <laughs> So how do we control this thing? Anyway, you go through this menu and you can set the time. It is right now 10.48 a.m. This is how you can have it turn on for a predetermined number of hours. You can set your RPMs. The faster your RPMs go, the more airflow you get. So we have it fairly high. This is the minimum at 2,600. And then it can be a maximum of 5,000 RPMs. It's a 12 volt system and that's it. Those are all the settings. So you just turn the sucker on. It says on. You'll hear it booting up. Air starts to flow in and out of the unit. This is the heater plug that's warming up to start the combustion. And then right down here, you'll see a pump kick on. There's the pump that's on now and the fans ratcheting up. And this is where you'll see your heat indicator. Pretty cool systems. All in, this is like 225 bucks. That's very, very reasonable. But we did make some modifications. We went with a completely sealed muffler line and then I purchased some uh, fiberglass tape to go over the top of that to kind of keep the heat in and keep it from being like too hot to touch. And if you look online, everybody's buying silencers. They're really expensive. They're like 200 bucks uh, that are a sealed silencer system, but like it's running right now. We don't have a silencer at all on the system. I don't know why you would waste the money to do so. Is there a reason why you've got to put a silence on it? This line just goes straight out the bottom up goosenecks over the water line and then out the exhaust. So it's working great. It's all fiberglass wrapped and uh, the temperatures seem well within reasonable ranges. So we're gonna keep it like this and hopefully nothing bad happens because we didn't add the silencer. That's really the only changes we had to make to the kit that it came with. We had to build a platform for it. We had to throw away the crappy exhaust hose that came with it and replace it with some better sealed stuff. 
and buy that fiberglass wrap for the outside. That was it. Oh, you do have to purchase the piece that we had already installed from our old heater that we ripped out, which is the exhaust port on the actual boat itself. Later that evening, we ironically chose to freeze our butts off by watching the local Christmas ships parade. Our friends at the end of the dock hosted us with front row seats to the show. We blasted our horn. <laughs> After watching all that, it was hard to spend our first Christmas with Drifter undecorated, so... For Christmas! Shitter's full! Hey you! Thanks for watching! If you like what you see and you want to keep following along, become a subscriber! Just hit that subscribe button below! And special thanks to our patron crew! We really appreciate your support! Hi, Mom. <laughs> Aggressive. That's how I behave. What did you hear from me earlier today? Uh, a lot of swearing. Yeah. It's burning my fingertips, as Morgan Freeman would say. He would never say that. But they're throwing candy canes. Did you get any? No. <laughs> I have. This is so much better than Mexico, Owen. Uh-huh.